Hi everybody, my name is Jason, and I am the Yahoo and the Tour channel, and we thank you guys very, very much for joining us. It will be a little bit different of a broadcast today because it is myself on my own here, and we are going to be going over the Lost Statues of Commands of Messiah Yahushua, and we thank you guys very, very, very much for joining us. We appreciate everything that you guys do and the comments that you guys make, and I want to go over a couple of things real quick here. Today is month eight on our creator's calendar. It is the second day. Is this the first day? What are we at? It is a, it is the first, it is the 11th, uh, 11th month on the Gregorian calendar. Is the first day on that it is November. And it is the sixth day on our creator's calendar. It is the third day of this week. And that is the calendar. So let me take you into a comment that I have over here. And I wanted to go over this with you guys. And this is from Ansta Soli. And uh, this was from a video that we did on... This is a uh, the commandments, Matthew 28. And so this is what she says. And I don't know what, I don't know what they mean by black Jesus, but uh, whoever this is says, His name is not black Jesus. And he knows when we call upon him, man may condemn me for saying Jesus, but Christ does not. People condemn me for Halloween... But that shows the devil has control over them and their faith is fake and the blood of Christ is not really with them. Catholicism is also religion of the Antichrist. Good day. All right. So um, there's some interesting stuff right there. Um, I don't know about the black Jesus, but um, I, Halloween is evil. And um, you are breaking Torah commandments simply by keeping uh, it, uh, Halloween. You are doing what the pagans do. You're doing what the heathens do. You are doing what the other nations do. Um, you're practicing witchcraft. You're practicing sorcery. And even though you are not, um, even if you don't dress up as a witch, if you dress your kid up as the same stuff the pagans do and you send them out in a, a cult pagan way, that is still doing what the pagans do. And so it is not uh, too good of a thing. You shouldn't absolutely be doing this at all. And so we are starting. I have to say we, but it's kind of lonely here today. So um, I will be doing this all by myself. And we will be doing the handy dandy split screen. And there we go right here. Okay, so we are starting in Marcus right here. And this is, we are in the very first part of this, the Hallelujah Scriptures. And Nicole finished with the Hallelujah Scriptures yesterday. The entire scan is on our website, Yahoo and the Torah, Y H W H A N D T H E T O R A H, Yahoo and the Torah.net, and under Hallelujah Scriptures there, you can find the Hallelujah Scriptures and it, the full downloaded version of it. It is we have it as uh, digital version one, and um, that's all you need. Did you have something, Nicole? At the very top, it says complete Hallelujah Scriptures. It has its own link. It's not under downloads. It's just okay. its own link. At the very top, it's a downloads. It, it has its own link, and you can download the entire book. How many megs is it? 119. It's 119 megs, and that is all the Hallelujah Scriptures. And if you guys look at Marcos right here, this is actually, um, this right here, what you see is what Nicole has cleaned up. So at some point, you will there will be different revisions of the Hallelujah Scriptures that we put out that will have all of this cleaned up. And we have it for Genesis, but we do not have it for anything else. And it takes forever. She has to clean these pages up as we go. All right, so let's get into this. And the dogs will always bark, so my apologies for that. Okay, Marcos, the beginning of the good news of Yahushua Hamashiach, the bin of, Adam, bin of Yahuwah. As it has been written in the Nebium, see... I send my messenger before your face, who shall prepare your way before you. Okay, so I have two different things here, guys, because I don't have anyone here, so I am doing all of this. Three, a voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way for Yahuwah, make his path straight. Yochanan came immersing in the wilderness and proclaiming an immersion of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Yahuda. And those of Jerusalem went out to him and were all immersed by him in the Yardin River, confessing their sins. And Yochanan was clothed with camel's hair and a leather girdle around his waist and eating locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, saying, After me comes one who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loosen. I indeed immersed you in water, but he shall immerse you in the Ruach HaKadesh. 
So this is a um, this is uh, our Elijah. This is this is Elijah that we know of as of from Matthew because it, we knew that John the Baptist was not reincarnated, but he was reset up, and that this was the precursor to our Mashiach, and this was the guy that was going out in front of all the Pharisees and the Sadducees and had a different message than they ever heard. And he was he was uh, challenging them where others had not been challenged them before. So he goes on and continues and says, eight, I indeed immerse you in water, but he shall immerse you in the Ruach HaKadosh. And it came to be in the, those days that Yahushua came from Nazareth of Galil and was immersed by Yochanan in the Yardim. And so... As we are reading through this scriptures, this is by far the very best translation I have ever found. And um, I am so happy that we're actually reading through this um, in this version. It's so nice to actually have this and not have to sit here and mess around with the, the bad translations of Dr. Stephen Pigeon. Verse 9. And it came to be in those days that Yahushua came from Nazareth of Galil and was immersed by Yochanan in the Yardin. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the, sh he saw the Shimaim being torn open and the Ruach coming down on him like a dove. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the Shimaim being torn open and the Ruach coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came out of the Shimaim, you are my Ben, the beloved in whom I delight. Why did I get to look like that, Nicole? Because you repeated yourself. Did I? Mm -hmm. What did I say? You did it twice. You did 11 twice. Did I? Or right. 10 twice. Sorry. Okay. And a voice came out of the Shimaim, you are my bin, the beloved, in whom I delight. That will be three times. And immediately the Ruach drove him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tried by Satan and with the wild beasts and the messengers attended to him. Okay. So um, we are basically in another version of the same stories that we've heard before. And um, we had a, you know, these are the stories of our um, where our Messiah was baptized and out of the Shimaim, a voice came out of the, the heavens and it said, you are my Ben, the Ben is my, you are my son, the, the one. And, you know, for the Trinitarians, the people that believe that the father and the son and the Holy Spirit are all one, these, this would be a crazy experience right here because you would be sitting here and you would be talking to yourself. If Messiah Yahushua was the father and he came out of the sky, out of the sky, and he says, you are my Ben, which is my son, and he wasn't the son, then our creator would be a liar right here. The creator and his son would also be a liar. So these are very important things. These kill the Trinity. The entire scriptures kills the Trinity. There's no such thing as the Trinity. All right. 14. 14. 14. And after Yochanan was delivered up, Yahushua came to Galil. Proclaiming the good news of the reign of Elohim and saying, the time has been filled and the reign of Elohim has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And sorry, guys, I'm a little bit behind on this other thing. Uh, usually I have Eli and I do not today. Okay, 16. And walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Shimon and Andrei, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Yahushua said to them, come, follow me, and I shall make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And having gone on a little from there, he saw Yaakov of Zabadi and Yochanan, his brother, and they were in the boat mending their nets. And immediately he called them and leaving their father Zabadi in the boat with the hired servants, they went after him. And they went into Kefir Nechem and immediately on the Shabbat, he went into the congregation and taught. Okay, this is another one of these things that the Christians believe that our Messiah has done away with the Sabbath. The, they, he, the Christians will go, the, the, Jesus is the, is the Lord of our Sabbath, and they want to make the Sabbath day any day that they choose to make the Sabbath day. And our Creator has never said that. Our, our, the Sabbath day has never been changed. It doesn't matter if, if our Messiah is the Lord of the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is still the seventh day. And so if Messiah Yahushua went and was teaching and in a in a uh, temple, or he was in a um, you know a place where they were where they were listening to him. He was teaching on a Shabbat. Why was he there on a Shabbat? Because he was keeping the Shabbat, and that's what he did. He, he taught them on the Shabbat. Twenty two, and they were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as possessing authority and not 
as the scribes. And that's a huge thing right here. When you are able to read from scriptures, that's one thing. But when you actually are the scriptures and you've lived the scriptures before this life and you know them, then you have this kind of authority. And that is the authority that Messiah Yahushua had. And he never once said the laws of our creator are gone. Never once did he say, this is a path that you guys don't need to keep the laws or um, my father was a little strict on you guys. I don't want to be as strict. So you don't need to keep the commandments. He never, ever said that. All right, 23. And there was a man in their congregation with an unclean spirit. And he cried out saying, ha, what have we to do with you? Yahushua of Nazareth, did you come to destroy us? I know whom you are, the Kadesh one of Elohim. And again, right here, this will go off and the people will say that Jesus and God are the same person. Well, it seems as if the demons actually know, um, they, they seem to know better than the Christians do. So if the demons said you are the Kadesh one of Elohim, that means you are the holy one of our, our creator, Yahuwah. He's, they're not saying, um, did you come to destroy us now? He didn't say, I know who you are. You are Elohim. He says you are the Kadesh one of Elohim. And again, that is the son. He is the son, not the father. Okay, 25. And Yahushua rebuked him saying, be silenced and come out of him. And throwing him into convulsions, the unclean spirit called out with a loud voice and came to him. And they were all so amazed as to reason among themselves saying, what is this? A fresh teaching with authority, even the unclean spirits and they obey him. Okay. So this is a huge, huge thing. People had never seen this. We don't have records prior to Messiah Yahushua that we are able to get rid of demons like this in people that we know that we can not control them, but that we can get rid of them in certain ways. And the people thought this is a new teaching, right? It's in something new. They'd never seen this before. And this is the power of the son that he is able to get rid of the demons. 28. And news about him immediately spread into all the country, country round about, around Galileo. And coming out of the congregation, they went straight to the house of Shimon and Andre with Yaakov and Yochanan. And the mother-in-law of Shimon lay sick with inflammation and immediately they spoke to him about her. And having come, he took her by the hand and lifted her up and immediately the inflammation left her and she served them. Now, this is a second account that we have of this. In Matthew, we have this same account and this is um, yet more witnesses of this incident of, of the, the thing that went down and this was Messiah healing the mother here. And um, this is, you know, more miracles, more, more and more and more miracles. And sorry, I'm a little delayed on the, the top part. I get yakking here and I forget to scroll you guys up. 31. And having come, 32. Thanks. At least I still got Nicole. 32. And when evening came, when the sun was down, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon possessed. And I have to stop you there because this is a breaker for the people that say that Shabbat is sunrise to sunrise. Because why would they start bringing him people at evening to heal? That is after that, Shabbat. Yeah, that is, yeah. That is that is a um, the, the people believe that su the Shabbat or a day for Hebrews begins sunrise to sunrise. And that is, that is incorrect. And so he was there um, on a Shabbat. And so this was a Shabbat. They said it prior to this was a Shabbat. And so um, they brought him all of those. And let me read that again. When evening came, when the sun was down, they brought to him all who were sick and those who were demon possessed. And the sun being down would mean we're into the next day, right? So it's no longer a Shabbat. And so that's why those who were sick all started traveling to him and getting to him. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. 33. And the entire city had gathered at the door and he healed many who were sick with various diseases and cast out many demons and was not allowing the demons to speak because they knew him and having risen very early in the morning while still dim he went out and went away to a lonely place and there he prayed and shimon and those who were with him searched for him and when they found him they said to him all are seeking you and he said unto them and he said to them let us go into the neighboring towns so that i proclaim there also because for this, I have come forth. Okay. And so this is, he's given us a, a statement of exactly what he's doing. And he's, he's proclaiming something. He's proclaiming the good news. He's proclaiming the kingdom is, is on its way or it is here. 
And this is what people need to get ready for because he didn't come to proclaim that the laws of our creator are gone. He came to proclaim that salvation was now available to everybody because he was about to become the perfect sacrificial lamb. And so this is a very, very important stories and all of the stuff that we're going through here. Okay, uh, 39. And he was proclaiming in their congregations in all Galilee and casting out demons. And a leper came to him, calling upon him, kneeling down to him and saying to him, if you desire, you are able to make me clean. And Yahushua moved with compassion, stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I desire it, be cleansed. 42, and, yeah, and immediately the leprosy left him and he was cleaned. And having strictly warned him, he immediately sent him away and said to him, see, say not to anyone, but go show yourself to the Kohen and offer, for your, offer your cleansing what Moshe ordered as a witness to them. Okay, so this is yet another deal breaker for the Christians. The Christians believe that the laws of our creator are gone. And the laws of our creator are not gone. In fact, this guy had leprosy. He cleansed him with leprosy in the Torah, in the Torah, in the, in the law, statutes, and commands, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. It tells us that when you have leprosy, once you're cleansed, you take a offering to the, to the Kohen, the priest, and then you are cleansed. You, you follow it through with a little ritual. This is what Messiah Yahushua just sent the leper to do because the laws, statutes, and commands are still in effect. And so Messiah Yahushua is basically saying, go do what the Torah said to do. All right, 40, uh, 44? Five. 45, all right. And it's just a little difficult without having an app here, guys. Okay, last verse here. But he went out and began to publish it so much and to spread the word that Yahushua was no longer able to openly enter the city, but was outside in lonely places. Yet they came to him from all directions. Yeah, and that is what people are going to do. People are going to hear the good news. People are going to, it's hard when something good is happening to you or something good has happened or something of the sort, news spreads fast. It will always spread fast. Early on, the very first chapter, our Messiah was becoming a celebrity. He was becoming uh, a, 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 a celeber, celebrity. And um, not in the sense of the evil celebrities of today, but everybody wanted to be around him. Everybody wanted to be near him. Everybody that had somebody sick was trying to find him. This was the man who was able to work the power of Yah. And people saw this and they, they knew it and they, they thronged to him and they loved him. And so... As we go through this book, uh, we appreciate you guys. Thank you very, very, very much for hanging out with us. Sorry, it's a little quiet today. That's just how things go around here sometimes. And we will maybe get the rest of the boys back later tomorrow. And hopefully we will have uh, Youth for Ya is uh, tonight in Spanish. In Spanish. Uh, for anybody who is interested in that, it will be in Spanish, uh, published tonight. And uh, there are Proverbs 20-something. I don't know exactly what it is. But that is it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And we will see you again another time. Shalom. Shalom.